Aloha, everyone. It's Wednesday afternoon, four o'clock, our favorite time for Hawaii, the state of clean energy. My name is Mitch Yu, and I'm your senior host today. I'm joined by my junior host, uh, Jay Fidel, uh, and our guest, Richard Ha, a long-term friend of mine, a friend of Hawaii, a master banana farmer from the Big Island, uh, but he's, that's not all he does. He's also a hydrogen enthusiast, geothermal enthusiast, and most recently is leading a team to help our, kahu our kapuna in uh, developing uh, do-it-yourself face masks. For those of you who can't get one, you can't find one um, for love and money. So we're going to be talking a lot about the virus, uh, like everybody, maybe everybody's getting uh, tired of that. But uh, I think this is a positive conversation in how you can self-help yourself. And um, Richard and his team from Hawaii Energy, uh, Hawaii Sustainable Energy, have done a really great job in pulling together a program on how you can make your own masks. And they actually have a guide on how to do it. And so I'm going to break off uh, and uh, say hello to uh, Richard. Richard, hello. Aloha. Yeah. Hey, uh, aloha. And also aloha to you too, Jay. So Richard. Oh, hi, Mitch. Hi, Richard. Yeah, tell yeah, us about uh, sustainable energy and our face masks. Just a little introduction. So, yeah, we, well, we were involved in energy things for a long time, ten years or so, or even longer. And then recently, you know, we focus on the existential th threats of uh, climate change and declining fossil fuel. And so we were, you know, busy doing that and and working with Halco and PGV and their. Um, uh, the efforts to bring bring online PGV, and and then this virus thing popped up and took over, and got you know it became so serious that we figured, oh man, we better we better focus on this and try to help where we can, you know. So that that's how come we're here. Can you pop up the first little slide just to help us uh, visualize what we're talking about? So here you see on this first slide is a homemade uh, mask and all the makings of what it takes to uh, make one of these things. So Richard, uh, tell us a little bit more about um, what we're seeing here and, and the kind of materials that we're going to be using. Yeah, you know, it's the kind of material that everybody has because it, the way it is right now, the N95 mask, the, uh, uh, the health uh, 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 providers, you know the hospital people need need the masks. So what what we wanted to do was to see if we could uh, make masks for the rest of the people, um, and and if we succeed in doing that, then maybe we can release more N95s to to the caregivers. Yeah. So um, so everything you see in in our video is actually we we started this more than a week ago, and we did some research and you know because there's a lot a lot of interest in this now and it's popping up on the internet, you know, daily. So we yeah. put it together and, and there's a video you can copy, but you can, you know, anybody can do it. You can sew it by hand or you can use a machine. Um, and the materials, you know, like cotton, for example, you know, there's, there's a list of materials and its effectiveness. And the cotton is up to 60% effective. But if you're not wearing a mask, you don't have any protection. If you're wearing a mask, 60% is better than nothing. Um, you know, in, in a short way to explain it, it's like this. Um, you know, when you, um, you're you instructed that uh, six feet is a safe zone, and whenever, whenever you're closer to people than six feet, then, then, then you, you really got to be concerned. Um, the N95 is, is meant to be 95% uh, effective at one foot and somebody sneezes right in your face. So, yeah. so that's, that's, that's uh, super good. So when you, let, let's think about when, when you go uh, in places where there are a lot, of, a lot of people that you're interacting with. And maybe you, you have to do that. You know, like if, if you're going to buy food, for example. Or, or if you're a, a teller at a bank and you're dealing with people, you know, a lot of these service things face-to-face, -face, 
uh, you're not really trying to be, you know, safe one foot away. What you're trying to do is is where where whatever can get you to to the the safety of the six foot distance. And and so if you think of uh, when you go shopping, you you might be three, four, five feet uh, away from people. And if you get a mask that's sixty percent uh, effective, well, that's certainly better than nothing. But it works two ways. It works for the for the person wearing the mask, because um, the the main thing is that eighty percent of the people that are, um, are transmitting the virus don't even know they have it because there's there's no uh, uh, symptoms during that time. So that's the, the that's the scary part. So that's why we got to do this. Um, yeah, yeah. So basically, you know, Richard, you know, you know, Richard, uh, we, we've been told now for the past three weeks or so. I mean, the time is compressed. You know, three weeks. It seems like longer, but it's only three weeks. That the mask is good to protect the other guy. So you know, and traditionally, this has been the case in Asia and other places. You wear a mask not for yourself but to protect the other guy so that your droplets, so to speak, will not, will land on the mask and not him, rather than the other way around. I mean, they say this, if you are looking to protect yourself, the mask is of no use or little use. Now, what you're saying is different. You're saying it's a two-way street. And uh, I want to tell you, I, I kind of, I've always agreed with that because I couldn't understand, you know, what the real distinction is. But wh how do you answer the people who say, that it's only good one way. It's only good to protect the guy on the other side of the mask, not you. What do you say? Uh, well, when you know, it's 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 like I said. You know, you you're. Would you rather have some protection or no protection? Because this this is so serious, and it it's. I'm I'm not talking about the older people or anything at this moment. Anybody, you know, that that has to go in closer than six feet. Anything you can do, if you put a, uh, a, a towel around your face, would help you some, and that some is better than nothing. So it's, 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 it's not complicated. You don't really need to have a 95% mask. What you need to do is uh, cut your risk, and this does that. All right. Yeah. Well, the other thing that comes to mind, Richard, is that they, and I, when I say they, I mean, gee, I, I mean the president, um, the governor, uh, the staff around the governor, everybody who's talked to us about this has said the masks are coming. They're coming. They'll be here soon. And we're, we're going to have a whole big force. You know, these all these companies are redirecting their manufacturing assembly lines to make masks. And you'll see. You're going to get these N95 or better masks all over the place, every state, including Hawaii. Um, but we actually don't have enough masks now. And if you went down to, uh, you know, Walmart or Longs or name it, um, they don't have any masks. No masks for you. If you went on Amazon, lots of luck. So um, you, you, don't, you don't you don't get masks commercially, and you don't get masks for the government. But here you are involved in this DIY thing. And one day, I mean, this is a wishful prayer. One day, the masks are going to flood us. They're going to, we're going to be knee deep in masks. Masks from your federal government, masks from your state government, masks from the commercial sector, from Walmart and Amazon, you name it, it'll be all over us. What's going to happen to all the masks you make, which are only 60% effective? Hey, you know, we, we, the thing about us is we got common sense. If it's 65% uh, effective, we're going to use that. Throw away the one we made. But we're going to use what we can, what we can use. You know what they call that? Common sense. Yeah. Yeah, well, it can, it can come back to something is better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Absolutely. And you know what? Everybody can do it. And we got to do it really fast. There is no way that we can uh, reasonably expect to have a flood of mastery within two weeks, let's say. It ain't going to happen. Agree. But can we get everybody a mask in two weeks? I bet we could. If sure. we put all our mind to it. Because you know what this is? This is the aloha style. We take care of each other. Just like you say, we, when you wear a mask, you're really protecting the other person. Because when you protect the other person, 
then you lessen the risk for everybody. So we help each other that way. So it's the aloha way of doing it. But you know, Richard, there's one other thing that's very Hawaii about what you're doing. And that is the notion of dry goods. You know, remember all those, you're old enough to remember all those dry goods stores everywhere, every little town, every city, every corner had a dry goods store and you could buy, you know, fabric and you could sew things uh, with or without a sewing machine and you could make dresses and shirts and pants and everybody, every family was doing it. This, I think, is deeply ingrained in the Hawaii local culture, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I was amazed. We were just on a, 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 on a, a call this morning. And then, you know, the lady told me, oh, yeah, I'm making a mask. I just made one. I'm going to make another one today. And then I had another conversation with them. And they're doing that. I, 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 it flipped me out. I, I, I never even imagined. It's just a start. So yeah. Let's have a look at the next slide uh, that shows some of the different fabrics. You want to comment on this, Richard? Yeah, but, you know, people can read it for themselves, yeah? Because, <laughs> first of all, I cannot see that good. But it tells you if you're using a scarf, you know, what, what the uh, uh, efficiency, you know, so you, you can decide on your own because some, some of the materials cost more than others. The, the, one of the most effective is just an old T-shirt, cotton T-shirt. You know, that's right. the one that's uh, 60%, yeah? So people can make their own choices. So would you put that uh, t-shirt or would you double it up in layers or it's just like a single layer or I guess just so yeah, there's different there's various different ways of doing that yeah. yeah so and you know in some cases you make a little pocket and then you put something in there you know uh, but I, I I don't want to say uh, uh, something that I'm I have not actually checked but so I, I, I read a little bit that you could use Something like, you know, those disinfectant wipes and put it inside there. Oh, really? Um, hmm. Sounds reasonable. We've got to check it. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, if you make it out of a T-shirt, maybe you want to make it out of a logo T-shirt. For example, um, these masks that, that your your team, your volunteers are making, they could have uh, Hamakua Springs Farm, for example, uh, all over the front of it. So everybody would know you built goodwill. Uh, or an energy slogan of some kind, or for that matter, and this is the most important suggestion I can make, they could be Think Tech Hawaii masks. They could be Hawaii, the state yeah, of clean yeah. energy masks. You could, you could really get some publicity absolutely. going. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> really. Just in case everybody's wondering, we do have a uh, link at the final slide uh, to the website or, or a link to where you can get the, uh, the full instructions in great detail on how to make a variety of maps, not just uh, a uh, simple one, but uh, there have been various degrees of uh, complications or uh, technology, like Richard was saying, one is one with a pocket that you can then stuff whatever you want inside that pocket to uh, cut back the flow. So um, I recall uh, when I was going to uh, college uh, way back in the day, uh, one of my very old professors had actually been in the world World War One, and he had been the developer of the original gas masks they used in the trenches, mm. and uh, they used a whole variety of stuff. Uh, to um, this is when they were uh, having uh, chemical attacks uh, with chlorine and various other bad things, mustard gas, and all that kind of stuff. So you know the. Uh, Humans have been uh, developing this stuff for a long time. Um, so let's have a look at some of the other slides. Uh, we can talk about these as we walk away through it. So here's a slide that uh, talks about the different types of materials. I notice uh, uh, pillowcases are also an option. Um, mm -hmm. I guess if you get one of the high thread count ones would be better if you can afford these very high thread count uh, sheets. I guess my other, other question I have is what about washing them? I mean, I, you know, you can wash a t-shirt. So I, I expect that uh, you could put uh, put it in your washing machine with some really good detergent and wash all those little, yep. uh, yeah, those little germs out, those bacteria. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's uh, one of the things that we made sure we could do because, you know, the rubber slipper folks, if, if they can, they, the idea of buying a mask and throwing it away, 
it's pretty soon it cut, starts to cost money and the mask yeah. themselves cost a lot of money. But if you make it yourself and then you wash it with soap and yeah. you know, like uh, what you're saying, um, then you can reuse them, make two, three, you know, just have them stand by and ro rotate them. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I guess and, if and you got by the way, you know, this this video, there's a video in here that people that people can watch and, and learn how to do it. It shows how yeah. to do it. Right. So let's have well, another just a question about washing. You know, I, yeah. I my memory is not exactly accurate on this, but I I recall that um, one of the problems with these masks uh, is that you know they they accumulate virus in a in a dangerous setting. The virus is on the outside of the mask, although I suppose it could be on the inside too. Um, and so I don't, I think they throw them away in a medical setting. I think they throw them away because they, they're not, they're not convinced that the, that the mask will hold up after a washing. Um, and uh, they're not convinced that, um, you know, the, uh, the washing, the washing will remove all the virus either. Uh, so I, I wonder if you've addressed that and whether, you know, or we just fall back on the notion that it's better to have something, even if you've washed it, than have nothing at all, yeah. Well, if you wash it with soap, the soaps work the way you wash your hands, yeah? It, it, mm -hmm. it takes the, the, the virus apart. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the most effective thing you can do is wash it with yeah. soap. Here, yeah. here it doesn't stand up well to heat too, so if you actually have a dryer and put it on, you know, super hot, that will basically cook them as well. So not, I, I don't I know. know the science of that, but but I do know the science of uh, soap. <laughs> yeah, right. soap is good. You know, there's a, there are devices out now, and I cannot vouch for how effective they are, but there are devices out now on the web and elsewhere, uh, which are ultraviolet light. Right. And apparently hospitals use these when they want to sterilize a room, they just they have these robots that move into the room and shines a strong ultraviolet light all over the room. Uh, nobody in the room, just a just a robot. Um, and then when they finish, you know, the room the room is supposedly sanitized. And I wonder if uh, one alternative to uh, washing would be to run um, run uh, this ultraviolet uh, an ultraviolet light over it and kill the virus that way. Uh, it's just a thought. And I'm not even sure yep. that ultraviolet light does what we want it to do, um, but that that might save the mask. You know, those repeated washings are going to, you know, uh, they're going to have an effect on the the, the 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 mask. And after all, it's supposed to be what not airtight, but uh, it's supposed to be close to that, and it's supposed to be you know stretched tight against the skin, so there's no way anything can enter from the sides. And a lot of the masks have been criticized. Uh, because the loose, the, you know, the ones that are less, uh, you know, less popular than the N95 masks are the ones that open on the sides, and then the virus can get in from the sides. So um, you don't want to, you don't want to break the seal, so to speak. And I think, um, well, this is one possibility for cleaning them without uh, damaging the stretch fabric. But that goes to another question, Richard. Where are the patterns? You have patterns because you got to take yep. this. this T-shirt or cloth, and you got to cut it in exactly the right way, right? How do you do that? What, yeah, where do you it's, get it's, it's it's all described in the, in that uh, the video, the presentation there. Everything. If if you had nothing but the sewing needle, you you could start to make one. Yeah. So every, everything is there. We 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 took the time, and I got to give Laurie Farrell credit for this. She did a lot of work, you know. And uh, any, anyway, so uh, I wanted to. Talk to you a little bit about uh, common sense. You know, um, we know that the virus will, you know, you, you you cough, it lands on something. If it lands on cardboard, it'll, it'll be uh, viable for 24 hours. If it lands on plastic and, and uh, stainless steel, it'll last maybe two, three days. Let's say three days. And then it's uh, it's not able, it's not viable anymore. So So let's say you go shopping. And you come home with a bag of uh, uh, several bags of, 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 of goods and your house is perfectly a safe zone. Now, how do you get your stuff from the bag from your other safe zone, which is your car into your safe zone? So now you remember I said that it uh, it could only last for three, three days. 
well, what if you did this? You took all all the stuff that that is wrapped and and in 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 uh, uh, cans and stuff like that, and left it out for five days. Now the virus is all gone. You just walk in your house, and you still have a safe zone. That and this is what is missing to this whole discussion. We need education, and we need the time now when everybody's home for the Department of Education and the state to step up and and do instruction stuff on TV and show kids how they can contribute to a safe zone. Then they understand why they're doing what they're doing. They got to do this now. It's the education part. Mm, but uh, real, I mean, you know, I'm, when you think about it, you say, oh, but but they uh, sanitize the store at night and then in the morning, the, the kupuna can come in. Yeah, but they talk, they have you stood in the aisle and watched people touch this and put them back? And no way are they going to sanitize if you can, right? So you got to assume that you can bring it home with you. So you got to start to think in like that. Absolutely, it's true. And and the washing hands is very, 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 very important. And and probably we should include washing our face with, you know, at some some uh, regularity as well. Yeah, yeah. Really. So let's look at the next slide just to uh, look at some other common sense solutions. So the next one after that. So, so there, there you see a set of just ordinary plastic ties you, you find in the supermarket to tie up a plastic bag. Uh, that can be incorporated in the construction of your mask. And the instructions that uh, um, Richard's team of put together tells you how to do all that. So you can actually make a mask and you apply all these little plastic ties around the around the border so that you can get a better fit, uh, you know, of the mask on your face, like like uh, um, Jay was talking about. So you get that uh, you don't get a kind of a a uh, access port for the germs to come in through the sides or the tops or whatever. So. This is what I call a MacIver solution. You know, MacIver that used to be a TV show. <laughs> he could make anything out of anything. He'd be locked in a room and he'd have like just a newspaper or something and he could make a, a weapon out of it. He'd weaponize a newspaper by rolling it up. When the guard comes in, he'd bang him with it. And this is kind of what uh, you guys are doing. So I have another question. Yeah. You guys let, let, me, let me say one thing about the fit. You know, the, yeah. the fit of these masks, are meant to kind of follow your face and and you don't you, you know like the n95 i have n95 i walked around with them and evaluated it uh it, it's kind of stiff and and it, it i like the idea about making a mask that that's kind of flexible and fits your face you know it yeah. might not have all the the total stuff in it but and and not only that you you're you're not expecting somebody to sneeze right in your face Right. So yeah. we, we can although, go over war with this. You know, like when somebody says, happens. Oh, it's gonna leak in. What's gonna leak in? Three to yeah. three, four, five feet air gonna leak in and it's gonna kill you? No, no, I'm sorry. It that doesn't make any sense at all. Right. When you put the mask on, it improves your chances. Yeah. And, so just and, like and I wanna make this really clear. Uh let, let me let me explain this first. What okay. we should be teaching is safe zones. We should be teaching, okay, how do you maintain a safe zone? Where is your safe zone? It's your home. How do you do that? First of all, if, it, if, 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 if you walked inside there and didn't move for four days, it would be an automatic safe zone because the, the virus would all be inactive. Yeah. So yeah. now it's up to you to maintain it. Then you have a car as your safe zone. Okay, what does that mean? It means you can drive all over the island. No problem. So it's a pretty big safe zone. Then if you can go anywhere that there's nobody within six feet, that's huge. The only place you really got to be concerned about is when you have to walk into a store and go shopping, stuff like that, or pick up your food, things like that. So what you do is you wear your mask, you get out there for the hour it takes to shop, you come back, and then you deal with how you get your food and yourself back into your safe zone. All right. Yeah, and how you clean off your mask? Do what you got to clean off the mask so it doesn't carry virus from which you picked up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
wash them or put them in a plastic bag with the date on it and tell you when you can use them again. You know, one really thing I, I hope you'll cover, Richard, is uh, where do you get the people to do this? Are they volunteers? I mean, I'm reminded of uh, the UK. Boris Johnson went out and he, he requested that 250,000 volunteers to help deliver food to people. Kupuna. They have Kupuna in the UK too, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. deliver food and all this. And uh, that was yesterday. In 12 hours' time, he had 440,000 uh, people who volunteered. And so, you know, this just begs for volunteers, doesn't it? How are you getting the volunteers? Absolutely. Who are going to you know, we got people already talking to people. It, it, it's a movement. I can tell you, I can see it happening. It's a movement. We're right. not going to have any problem getting the volunteers. First of all, yeah, take care. Right. You know what you got to do? You got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your family and you got to help your community. Yeah. So it seems you know, to me- we do. Go to the store you do your shopping and everything like that um you should almost come back in and do a complete have a shower change your clothes put your clothes uh in the in the uh, washer and dry their wash and dry them so like you said so you're keeping your safe zone safe it's almost like being an astronaut you know like you go out and you have to go through an airlock and you have to kind of de-contaminate -con then you come in, like you say, your safe zone. So I think that people should be having more showers, I think, like at least maybe twice a day. You know, you shower in the morning, you shower at night before you go to bed, and then you do a complete change of your clothes so that uh, you're not carrying a bunch of residuals around with you. Yeah, and you know what is the objective of this? It, it is, uh, what, what are we trying to achieve? First of all, we are trying to get our whole island and state from here to when there's a vaccine. In other words, we got to find a system that works from now to a year from now. If, right. it, if we get something before then, lucky. But we got to get from here to there. And the reason for it is because then we can have some uh, stability. Um, and then, you know, like, for example, here's, here's a good one. And, and it's really important. Social equity is extremely important. Try to try think about, I, I was in the line talking to a lady that was uh, the checkout and just asking her and telling her, I, did, I, I, I didn't have the virus, but I was practicing. And then I could see that she, she was talking to me about this. And then I could see that when, when, when the virus count will start going up, which we know it will, she's gonna have to choose between her job and her family. It's right. not fair to put the, our people in, in that place. We, we got to take care of these kind of people. We got to get masked to them immediately. And then we got to make it so that, okay, um, food. Uh, let me see. To find out uh, who's wearing masks, because I'm afraid to go to some place where they're handing you out of the takeout window and no more masks. That means they're only three feet away from you. You can just blow it right on top of you and you don't know, right? But if they were wearing masks, it's a different story. Yeah. And if we all knew who was, they, 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 they start to get that mentality. Hey, pretty soon we're normal because the danger of health is serious. But the danger of our economic system collapsing is as dangerous. So right. we've got to have stability. This gives us stability. Well, mm -hmm. So who is going to uh, actually get the masks, Richard? Uh, can I get one? Can Mitch get, get one? Uh, uh, you know, who are you going to distribute it to and, and who's going to decide and who's going to actually deliver it? What's the method of delivery? Uh, the people are going to take care of their families, their friends, and they're starting to do it now. You know, and, and you know, take a big business that, that does, they don't really want to lay off their workers. Well, you want something for the workers to do? Buy them a sewing machine. Buy them several sewing machines and make shifts. And then give them away. You know, you know how the, the rest of the people will look at a business that does that? They will definitely be back to support them. Yeah, yeah, so that's that. what's gonna happen. And this this is what is gonna happen. I mean, it's gonna within days it's gonna happen. Yeah. And thank you for, for, for letting me say this, you know, because this is all common sense, right? And this is all yeah. a lot of stuff we're talking. Well, you know what, you, you really touched on a, a very important point, and that is we're all, we're all locked up, 
we're you know we're in a kind of self-imposed quarantine or we're, you know we're required one way or the other to stay at home and it's been a week or so it's going to be more it's going to be maybe a lot more and we're all going to get bored and wonder you know what what to do and, and of course there are those people who are going to break through and they're going to say i'm going out i can't stand it anymore and they're going to those people who are just going to take naps all day and do completely unproductive things but making masks is productive. It also, this whole discussion suggests to me that what we need to do is spend that time protecting ourselves, not only by making masks, but by refining the way we keep, we keep the virus off us, by creating a safe zone, by washing more and more often, uh, by finding little tricks in life uh, to get the virus off and keep it off. Because uh, yeah. ultimately, you know, there are a lot of people going to get this no matter what they do. But you have to think that if you take special care and you keep yourself specially clean, you probably have a better chance not to get it at all. You know? Yeah. And, and you know, uh, and I'm not, uh, this guy Chris Martinson mentioned that, you know, with the masks, the, the chance of getting a bigger virus load is less. And, and the problem now is the virus is so strong that it overwhelms our, uh, our, our immune system. The younger people with strong immune systems, they're, they're, they're luckier. But uh, if, if you can lessen the virus load, maybe you give your, sense, your, your, your body a chance to fight back uh, better. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, we and have that, a couple. Of we don't have scientific proof for that, but it's common sense, right? Common yeah. sense. Common sense goes a long way because you know sometimes you got to govern yourself by that. And, and I and what I hear you saying, Mitch, is you're about to close the show. But I want to be clear that immediately no. after the sh you're not closing the show. I'm no, telling really? you anyway that right after the show is over, I'm going to take a shower. I'm telling you now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have a few more. Good idea. <laughs> Joseph, so we'll get the uh, next slide, and uh, that'll generate a bit more discussion. So, I think this is everybody's seen this, but this is what uh, you're essentially talking about, Richard. Is saying all these little uh, cartoons you see here are ways to, uh, you know, build that uh, safe zone. Yeah, um, yeah. And we and need I help there. That. Yeah, we need help from the Department of Education right. to teach the kids to to put out. Uh, instruction videos, stuff like that, on how you maintain your safe zone. All these things are very important. Yes. So who's going to do that, though? I mean, who's going to take that kind of initiative? Now, you guys have taken that initiative. You actually said you made a video. I didn't realize that this was also a video that you had. Um, yeah. is, this, is this a Made in Hawaii uh, presentation uh, that you guys put together? Well, we pulled stuff from here and there. Yeah. Okay. But but it, this is a total uh, local st local style stuff. Yeah. Right. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, it's mainly because hey, there ain't no way we're gonna give up. We ain't just right. gonna roll over and die. There's no way that's gonna happen. As a matter oh. of fact, you know, we were thinking in terms of uh, energy, the two existential th threats which still sits below uh, this uh, coronavirus. When this is done, we still gotta deal with that. But imagine this, Where's where will Hawaii be? Hawaii will be in an incredible spot because we will have geothermal energy and the geothermal energy is, is, is free now, the heat is free and it'll be free for thousands of years while fossil fuel, I mean, the, you, we know the Russians are gonna raise the price or the, the price is gonna go up. We, we, we have no control of that, but we have control of using our resource. Right. And then the next step is when it, when fossil fuel starts to decline so far that we have to find an alternative. What is that alternative? It's likely hydrogen, right, Mitch? Absolutely. It's probably hydrogen. Yeah. So how do we do hydrogen? Two ways. We can go uh, take the hydrogen from from uh, of natural gas, and then you got to buy the natural gas. You got to take the hydrogen out. Then you got to pay for get rid of the the carbon. And then you can carry it around and, and you have a clean fuel. On the other hand, you could make it from electricity. Yes. You run electricity through water and you get your hydrogen oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. so, so now it's a matter of being very clever and working with the utility 
and 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 shape it in such a way that we can develop a uh, hydrogen ecosystem. You know, right. in other words, uh, you do something that uh, people start to move in that direction. And and what will happen is Hawaii will be the leader of the world because the longer we wait, the more the price of uh, fossil fuel will go up. Right. Ours won't. So we'll be competitive the further right, exactly. we go into the future. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just a little uh, public service announcement, um, you know, I'm highlighting, uh, you know, the team that put this together and why we're doing it. And I'm going to cut now to our final slide. Okay, so in red um, is the uh, link to all of this information uh, that everybody can go to. I also put in a plug for you there, Richard, the Sustainable Energy Hawaii which is oh, yeah. uh, our organization and you have a great little logo there with the, the uh, light bulb and the uh and the sailing canoe out there that's great <laughs> um, yeah nicer yeah so a really good takeaway from this is that everybody is watching this is to grab that uh website uh link and get onto the website and see the whole thing and in slow motion and you can read i mean there's a lot more i just we just grabbed a few little frames uh, out of the overall presentation, but they have very, very detailed instructions on how to set up your sewing machine, how to actually sew these masks. Um, it's uh, really, really well done. So I'd li like to congratulate you, uh, Richard, on doing that. It's, it's not me. You know, we, we have a hell of a team. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> you know, it's 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 amazing. I, 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 my job is just to nod and look wise. <laughs> yeah, well, but you had the idea, Richard, and that's the important thing. And yeah. you came up with this, right? And that, oh, and that's the leadership part. part. Yeah. You're making take a bow. Yeah. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> so, uh, I, don't know, I don't know where to stick myself. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the information that we got out today was really worth uh, worth the extra 15 minutes, I think. Jay would agree with me. And so oh, sure. that's it. Okay, I'm signing off. Jay always wants me to sign off quickly, so that's it. Aloha. Okay. All right, okay. let's take a shower. Aloha. All right, everybody in the shower. <laughs> All right. <laughs>